In this particular study note, we are going to discuss about nature and scope of economics. So, first and foremost we think, we have to understand a definition of any subject we are going to study. Since we are going to study about business economics, let us understand what is its definition. In this particular study note, following are our objectives. First, there are few terms which are involved in business economics. What are the two terms? Number one, business and the next one is economics. Putting together, we are having a different derived word called business economics also. We will first try to understand that. Then, having understood business economics, what we have to do? We have to understand about important attributes or elements involved in the term called business economics. So this is the two primary focus which we are going to do while learning this particular study note. We will move forward. So, since the first terminology in the definition, what we are having is business, let us try to understand what business means. Everybody loves money, right? So, business certainly helps us to get more money. It is nothing but a person's occupation, a profession or a trade. The method in which he is going to get more money by investing money. So, money gets money. So, that is what we have to understand. So, it may be an occupation a profession or a trade. You may work for one person and earn out of that or you will do some service and then earn out of that or you will sell some product or service and earn out of that. So that is nothing but a business. Now we have to understand that uh, how we can earn money for that we have to create an organization. How an organization can be created? There are various forms depends upon country to country. So we have listed down around say seven or eight types of organization here so that we can understand briefly about them to learn about them. The first and foremost thing is about the sole proprietorship. You don't depend on others. You are going to work on your own. You can do your uh, sole proprietorship by way of uh, either starting a small petty shop also or you can do your service through an ATAS function. You are all chartered accountants, correct? What you are going to do today, you are studying for chartered accountancy course. Some three to five years down the line, you are going to get qualified. If you are going to get a certificate of practice, even as a sole proprietorship, you can practice. And there, it is not that only a profession has to be CA. There are sister concerns also where you can practice law, where you can practice company secretaryship, where you can practice cost and management accounting also. So there are various options available for us as a profession also. And look into trade. There are times whereby we will buy a product for a lower amount and sell it for a higher amount. That can be done. The petty shop person normally does that. So now slowly at a smaller level, sole proprietorship might help. But what would happen when you are just growing the business? Alone, a single person cannot manage. So what we have to do? We have to involve other people. So then comes the partnership. So two or more people joining together. And what they are going to do? they are going to do carry the same occupation, profession or the trade. So the same activity, the one thing is that they are going to split among themselves, they will work together, they will earn together and any profits or even loss if incurred, they have to share among themselves as per the agreed ratio. And comes the limited liability partnership. The first two, two types of organization, what we have discussed are primarily relating to unlimited liability. Now what would happen because you are carrying on a business, you want to limit your risk, right? At one point in time, we will be very clear in telling that what is the downside risk I am having. I want to protect my downside. That protection can be got from a limited liability partnership. So limited liability partnership will clearly define what is the maximum loss a partnership is willing to take. So beyond that, that particular partnership is not uh, liable to pay to the persons who are affected because of that. Next comes the most important thing, joint stock companies. This is the more important and prominent thing for doing any business because this helps us to divide the management from the ownership. Okay, A person may be a shareholder in a particular company, there is no need for the person to work on it on a day-to-day -day basis. Only if there is any profit, he would be shared in the form of dividend. In case if the business is not earning any profit, what would happen? The management may not declare any dividend 
at the same time there is no liability beyond what he has subscribed to the particular capital so if a company is earning loss the management will not go and ask the person who invested in the company to invest more so that is one of the advantage we are having in a joint stock company and what would happen over a period of time in a joint stock company you intend to earn more when you started earning more there are benefits which are going to come when the benefits are going to come there is always a chance a shareholder may wanted to sell from his side to some other person for some profit so that he can cash it out the profit scenarios there and then we are having something called as cooperative societies here uh, there is no in intention to make any profit but human or welfare aspect comes into picture so what would happen there are group of people who are joining together one of the best example for a cooperative society is amul because we all know that the white revolution has happened because of that cooperative nature among the people the people who were rearing cattle okay they started collecting the milk and it is very clear that those small people the farmers who are rearing the cattle they may not have adequate facilities to store milk but there is an organization which is got created and that forms an initiative for us and gujarat has shown way for us in that particular sphere now in uh, in the real spectrum if you are asking me whether it is possible for me to start a cooperative society the answer is very simple yes as long as you are having a group of people and your objective is to bring benefit for those group those society of people more than a uh, profit if you are interested in sharing the economically available resources for the optimum benefit then cooperative society is one of the most important organization or the way of business we have to understand next comes the trust presently this trust is very 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 popular do you know the reason for that because it has its own tax advantages in case if it is for charitable nature or there are times where by family trust also there so the family trust are not only for uh, the basic things like uh, doing other businesses it is also for earn profit and ensure that the profit is distributed among the uh, co-partners or the beneficiaries of the trust as per the trust or will because there are times where by you might have earned billions of rupees and you want to pass it on to your next generation that too in some specified ratio you can create a trust a family trust and ensure that it is passed on to your next generation and it is not that we have to go like this sometimes what we will do we will just join a group of person i just want to do some activity together and rest of the time i want to do it differently so i may be a, a sole proprietor but for doing a particular business only i will just go and partner with some other person that is called as association of person so what doing that particular activity if i am grouping myself together then it forms something called as association of person in addition to this there may be some other organization any other type of organization what we are going to have uh, as long as that kind of organization is recognized by the law of land then we are comfortable in calling it as a business having said that various types of organizations now we have to proceed further to know about uh, the business which is relating to whether it is a profit motive or a charitable cause it is very simple that any business if it has to be performed by a group of people it is with the interest to earn profit only nobody will be interested in putting a money of 1 rupee today to earn less than that i would be happy to put my 1 rupee today tomorrow to earn more than that that is 1 rupee 10 paise or 1 rupee 50 paise etc so we always look for return on investment that is always a business but there is a different sphere also available what is that sphere it is about welfare welfare of the humanity and there are some people who would be interested in uh, making some business arrangement some business cause to ensure that the overall level the society is getting uplifted that is called as charitable cause and that is also called as business one of the best example is about the nationalization of the banks at that point in time uh, the uh, thought process of the indian great indian leaders was that they do not want to have any profit but ensure that the loans and uh, the credit facilities are given to the most people who are deserving it who doesn't have any uh, important uh, background like having a uh, having a enough funds etc with them 
So what they will do, they will naturally reach out to the banks. Since they do not have proper backing for them, the bank will normally reject that. In order to avoid that, government at that point in time thought that it is better for them to go ahead and uh, offer them the loans as per the laws given by the, proclaimed by the respective government. And the next one, what we have to understand is the method in which uh, those are getting performed, the boosters are getting performed. It may be physical, that is, you're going to a vegetable market. The vegetable market is actually a physical market because the buyer and seller are in the same place. They are going together, they are seeing each other, and there is a product or service which is available there. That is called as the performance in the mode of physical existence. Next is virtual. Stock market is the best example for that. Are you going to see who is the seller or are you going to see the buyer? No. If you want to sell today, you will just tell so and so shares, 100 at this particular rate, sell. It, the action happens there. Similarly, somebody wants to buy, he will also put a buy call there, stating the name of the share, number of uh, units, and the rate at which we, he is interested in uh, buying, and then the transaction is completed. That is also a market, but virtual. The buyer and seller are not physically touching each other. And I have to tell you one thing, this virtual market is making the entire world a simple global village. Next is the local market. This is one of the primitive in nature, whereby uh, the people, uh, wherever you are living, right, you'll go to the nearby shop, the mom and dad petty shops, right? Those are nothing but the example of the uh, local uh, nature of businesses. So it would happen near your street or near your town, etc., or in the villages where you are staying. Next is the national. The national one is primarily relating to the wholesale market and uh, even stock market, national stock exchange, NSE, right? It is one of the best example for national level performance, even though it is an example for virtual market, that is also the trades are getting happen at the entire India level. So it is a best example for national market also. The next one is international. Sometime before, I have informed you that world is becoming a global village, correct? And you can transact in India with some person who is staying in US or UK. And the best example for that is the Forex market. Today, we can buy futures and options in stock market sitting at home in the night because uh, almost except for 30 minutes, that Forex market is available almost 23 and a half hours in a particular day. So anytime you can log in, you can buy uh, or sell your futures and options in, uh, in a Forex market. Moving on to the next slide. Now, we are going to understand about economic stuff. Okay, we have already understood what is meant by business. Now we have to understand what is mean by economics so that we can take it forward. First of all, economics is nothing but a terminology which speaks, studies about the wealth. Everybody loves wealth, right? So the wealth is actually a subjective matter because the reason is that uh, wealth is nothing but a count of material items what you are having. Okay, you, from our perspective, what we will tell, if a person is having a lot of car or a lot of money in his bank account, uh, and then uh, he is having a, a lot of uh, uh, bungalows, etc., then we will think that he is a wealthy person. But will he be happy? No, that is not there. But there may be some person who is nothing but a hermit, who is staying there, uh, somewhere in the far off mountains. He doesn't have a proper house. And from our perspective, we, he will, we will tell them that he is not a wealthy person because he doesn't have a proper abode to sleep, and he doesn't have any bank balance, he doesn't have any conveyance to commute, etc. But that is not the case for him because he is more happy. So economics here is not about happiness, it is about wealth. What is the material thing we are having in our life? What is the thing, tangible things which we can show off to others? That is the study of wealth, which speaks about economics. Then, what are the items which economics actually deals with? It deals with three important things. One is production, the other one is consumption, the third one is distribution. Okay. So, why production? Because there may be some material available, which we call it as a raw material, that may be converted into a different one, something called as a finished product, right? So why we are getting converted? There are times, take the case of uh, daily milk, okay? Milk is available to you, raw milk, right? On a daily basis, uh, it is coming delivered by your milk vendor. Can you directly consume it? No, right? So few people, yeah, will do that, but at the same time, pr predominantly what would happen? people will uh, simply boil the milk and then ensure that either they are preparing tea, coffee, or some other things, whatever they are consuming on a daily basis, they will do that. 
and what would uh, happen over a period of time the milk got converted into some other different product and that particular change what you are having is called as production okay so now what are the why we have produced that do you want to prepare a coffee or tea and then throw it out no we are going to consume it okay that if you are preparing for ourselves we can consume it but there are times whereby there may be some guest etc so you will go prepare the coffee or tea and then go and offer it to them that is nothing but a distribution it is a simple thing which we have to understand that you are having some material and that material you are making some change some minor change which is happening and it is going into a new different product and after going into that particular product what are you going to do either you have to distribute to other persons so that ultimately it is consumed because the ultimate objective of any production is nothing but consumption so you produce something if you are just keeping it as a stock it is not going to be of any use but if it is ultimately consumed then the satisfaction for that particular activity has been achieved so production production of any item will end only with consumption in between comes the distribution because you have to reach the ultimate consumer another example i want to give is that we all know that okay pune is one of our uh, famous thing for uh, uh, automobile industries so various vehicles are getting produced there do you think that uh, all the vehicles are getting used only in that particular area no it across pan india network every automobile dealer we are having correct so what they are going to do they are going to procure that particular uh, vehicle from the production place and they are taking it to the de various dealers across india and they are reaching the ultimate consumer so even though it is getting produced at one particular area what is going to happen you are going to take that by way of your distribution network to various places where the ultimate consumer resides and then you are going to give it to that particular person so end of the day distribution helps the particular product or service ultimately consumed so between production and consumption comes the distribution part and sometime before we have spoken about a uh, thing called as uh, uh, the yeah, there may be a hermit etc who may not have uh, uh, may not have a place to stay and about to stay or may not have conveyance like we are having a car or bike or a scooter etc but still he is happy right so there are some economists who will come and tell that economics is nothing but your values and beliefs because we all know that one of the best example for this is the currency okay we all know that what happened in the year uh, uh, 2000 some two years before correct the reason is that it is nothing but a piece of paper where the country has told that we recognize this paper for so much a value and when the country is going to tell that i am not going to recognize that any longer then it is nothing but a piece of paper so end of the day anything okay what we are treating it as a wealth is nothing but your belief another example what i want to give you is that uh, there was a small boy who was walking down the uh, street okay suddenly he is seeing some small glass pieces so he is taking them okay he has shown it to a person uh, who is a uh, normal vendor street vendor and that person has told that uh, it is nothing but a piece of glass i'll offer you some 10 rupees you can give it to me that person has not uh, given to him he has gone to the nearby shop okay and it is nothing but a small piece of glass and that person is a jeweler jewelry person and that person after looking into it he told that it is one of the diamond and he is ready to pay more in the eyes of the vendor street vendor it was only a glass in the eyes of the person also it is only a normal glass piece but at the ultimate objective here is that you have to go to the right person to know the right value so that is more important here in economics because uh, this is nothing but uh, how you value a particular thing and what is your belief and a, a thing which is highly valued by one person may not be valued by another person so i may be interested in getting a particular thing or liking a particular uh, a way of uh, lifestyle but the other person may not be liking it correct so from his perspective he will think that this is a waste whereas from my perspective i'll be thinking that this is the most important thing which i value and for which i am ready to spend and next one is about it speaks about the relationship between ends and the scarce means why the ends and scarce means it's very simple there are various wants available for us we want to satisfy everything okay but do we have the raw materials do we have enough resources the answer is clearly no there are two problems here one the problem of abundance 
lot of things are available i do not know what to choose the other one is the problem of scarcity there are very few things available but my want is unlimited i have to satisfy my unlimited wants with the limited resources whatever i am having so unless the ways you know about the relationship between the ends and scarce means it is not possible for us to understand about the economics and if you move further okay economics the requirements of uh, uh, wants etc also vary from time to time the reason is very simple in the morning i may be hungry i want to have some idli dosa or bread etc as my breakfast but two or three hours down the line at uh, hours down the line what i will i do i will be looking for a food la, food okay full of lunch etc and in the evening i may be looking for some coffee tea or snacks etc while in the night i will be looking for a dinner or supper so over a period of time even though i am looking for food etc it varies right it varies from time and in india we are looking at something like italy to south india in the north india they will have a different set like uh, for nashta they will be having something like kachori etc but if you go to us and other things they may be having a burger or donut in the morning so from place to place or time to time based on how their lifestyle happens this will get changed and uh, it also changes from time to time also as uh, we have mentioned some time before uh, the reason is that uh, in the morning we are looking for breakfast in the in the afternoon we are looking for lunch in the night we are looking for supper or dinner so when the time changes similarly over a period of time when a person is at uh, around say 15 years of age he may be looking uh, at having a bicycle or even a scooter or a bike whereas at the age of 25 he may be looking for a car both of them are automobile only but the the expectation is somewhat different but at the age of say 45 or 50 he prefers something driven by others so that he can be very relaxed sitting at the back okay so uh if what we have to understand is that it varies from time to time and person to person okay is the economics a new concept for india no some 2000 years before okay there was a person called chanakya who is also called as kautilya he has also written a very great treatise that is called as artha shastra okay artha artha means it speaks about material thing shastra so the scope of that particular treatise is about material well being and of a particular subject of the state so he has provided various things which are all uh, relevant for the particular period some of them are relevant even today that particular treaty speaks about taxation which is one of the important aspect which we are even doing today so what are the items which you are uh, thinking about uh, uh, the tax and other things yes tax is also forming part of economics because it helps the government to earn money okay government is the more important entity which facilitates the business they are responsible for proper governance of any business if you look into the book artha shastra it speaks about various aspects how a uh, king has to ensure that he is properly levying taxes based on the produce one of the important chapter speaks about uh, having a, a collection of uh, tax dues in form of the produced material for instance if a person is going to have say 10 bags of rice or paddy cultivated six bag pertains to king whereas four bags pertains to the person who has produced it so that is the kind of precise information what he has provided and this artha shastra is not only about that it speaks about uh, spy activity and other things also which is not related to economics so some chapters of artha shastra are primarily dedicated for the governance governance of a particular country and its subject moving on to the next one I'm, i have spoken about some 2000 years before very recently some 200 years before we are having a person called adam smith who is called as the father of economics so he has written a very book very big book okay which is called as wealth of nation it runs into hundreds and hundreds of pages it speaks about why a particular country is generating wealth in a particular space the reason is very simple look into the history itself okay there is something called as uh, spice route Do you know what is meant by spice route? The spice route is nothing but from Europe. There is a way in which you have to travel through the Europe and Eurasia and Asia, finally reaching India and collecting the spices which are actually available here and transporting it back to Europe. So uh, the more important thing to understand from that is that uh, the items which are available here may not be available in some other place. 
the idea of economics is movement of these goods that is wherever the demand you have to supply there similarly the items which we are consuming here may not be available in the area near to us it may be coming from far off places also as informed to you sometime before even the automobiles what we are driving today and parking it at our home may not have been produced near our home that may have been produced in a factory which is 200 kilometers or 300 kilometers or 400 kilometers away from the place where we are residing and similarly what would happen is that uh, it may not be coming from the same country also for instance a lot of people are wearing jewelries right of course if you are a female you will be much more interested in wearing jewelries look into that okay there are various items which are forming part of it copper and then uh, gold and then stones studs etc which are forming part minute particles which are getting embedded into either a harem or a ring or a earring etc all those things are done by different people and uh, across the world we are having a lot of uh, uh, mining areas and they are taking out uh, the diamonds but do you know where is it getting polished across the world 80 percentage of the diamonds are getting polished in our surat okay the people there are specifically okay much more uh, specialized in doing that particular activity at a very optimum cost the answer there the more important thing the stress point in our information is that optimum cost because a polishing activity can be done from any place but where you are paying what is the money you are paying that factors of production is more important only that will help you to ensure that you are in a very good economic state so there are various factors of production which are available and you have to ensure that you are paying for that at an appropriate level because without money nobody will work right but at the same time whatever you are paying you have to ensure that you are getting a proper value for it that is available there that is the reason why they are using that particular area and this wealth of nations specifically deals with those aspects of a particular country okay so we all know that if you look into robotics we always look for japan if you look into automobiles we always look for germany if you look into a uh, cheap labor or english speaking labor uh, who is working in the night shift helping us and uk clients that is available in india and philippines this is because you are getting the same quality work done from here but at a lower cost as compared to the place where it is actually getting delivered moving on to the next slide now coming back to this particular page Uh, you can see that whatever we have discussed till now relating to production consumption and in between that there is something called as distribution which is available right distribution actually helps in generating the wealth why if you produce something do you think that you will be producing for free of cost no right you will get some money whatever you are investing you want to earn more than that similarly when you are consuming it somebody will be offering you free no what is going to happen you are going to pay for for whatever you are going to consume in between as i have told you from the producer to the consumer what is the thing we are going to do we are going to have a set of people who are going to bring various items very much thing so that from there from the producing area to the consuming area there will be a lot of persons involved intermediaries we call them that is nothing but our distribution network and that particular channel helps us to do the value addition for the particular product value addition here means the cost addition also and ultimately what would happen there will be various stakeholders who got benefited even in the distribution channel when ultimately it is reaching the consumer it will have some product plus a profit margin to that of course profit includes loss here because there may be some product which is actually uh, helping us to get only losses in the short run or maybe in the long run also but over a period of time no economic activity can survive without making profit out of the activities we are doing so i believe that this particular picture helps you to understand that so what are the three important legs the three legs are production consumption in between that is the distribution what is this three leg helps us to achieve the three legs helps us to achieve wealth creation and now we have known about business and we have also known about economics now what we have to understand the topic of this subject the topic of the subject is business economics for you now see the picture the picture is about uh, a four triangles right marked together to form another triangle and it start with an enterprise that is nothing but the organization we are having we have discussed about that eight forms trust you remember and an organization is there who is going to be there in the organization it's going to be the people so how they are going to come 
they are going to come in the form of labor okay the enterprise is actually formed by another person also he is called entrepreneur right and comes these are the two persons who are going to bring what there are two things they are going to bring capital one person will bring money the other person will bring effort and they have to do this activity at some place right that is the land so what is happening there so it is nothing but a entrepreneur using skills of another person in form of labor and then employing various other factors of production by using the money available with him in a particular place and then generating some income thereby creating wealth and earning profit right so this is a steps which are happening and for each and everything if we quantify it with some amount it is nothing but a data right and that data if we are properly applying with various statistical formulas then that gives econometrics so if you are going to apply statistics in the business theories whatever decision we are going to take that is nothing but the business economics now the data right we are speaking about data what is this data going to do this data is nothing but collection of various information from different sources relating to what relating to the factors of production what are they land labor and capital because they are the primary factors of production there are some other thing also beyond this right but ultimately you can correlate each of your production element into any one of the basic factors of production and then we have to understand a new terminology called pyms we have some time for that because we will discuss about that in depth in few minutes it may be a science or an art why an a business economics may be a science or an art we have to understand what is science and what is an art art is similar to anything like you are singing you are dancing you are playing some musical instruments so it varies from person to person not uh, and more importantly leave alone that okay uh, if you are playing cricket the shots played by sachin tendulkar is completely different from the shots played by ganguly because there is a personal touch personal element to that anything like that is nothing but an art but that is a different aspect to the science also how we can do that uh, in science if you are speaking about this plus this will give you this certainly whether it is done by x y or z that will give the ultimate output that is called as science because science will tell about the process and the ultimate end it is going to achieve and whether it is x y or z or whatever the time it is getting performed the output would be one and the same whereas if it is an art there is a human touch or behavioral touch to that what would happen because of that behavioral touch it's very simple it may vary so today i am taking this particular class tomorrow i may be taking it in a different version but whatever expressions or examples whatever giving today it may not be the same in a different class but if we are recording it what would it happen it would be repeating the same example that is one of the thing which we have to understand when a human element is always involved now i have told you that we will discuss more about pyms so uh, pyms we have to understand what are they first min money machines materials and methods are called as pyms they are actually related to the primary factors of production how that we have to understand now min min can be of two forms one a risk taking uh, men and another uh, a person who is not taking risk but who is willing to provide his labor please understand men includes women here so any human being who is taking a risk and ensuring that he is getting some activity done from others he is also uh, involved in that and he is willing to take that particular risk he is called as an entrepreneur so he is a person who brings various items men money machines materials method put together and he creates an enterprise or an organization after doing that he is ensuring that all his primary factors or production are getting properly paid or rewarded ultimately whatever left with that after the amount he has received from the consumer he is having some margin right that profit entirely goes to him if he is earning loss that is a risk he has taken he is going to uh, suffer the loss but if he is earning profit the entire thing is going to he be him only because the other factors of production will get only the amount what they have been contractually agreed for they will not get anything extra 
the laborer uh, who is providing the important labor here, okay, they are going to come and what they are going to do, they are going to offer their service. For that they are getting some money. And by getting that particular money, what they are going to do, they are satisfied that they have put some effort and they have gained for that. That is an economic activity. But will they get more? No. For them, the downside is limited. Whereas for the entrepreneur, the downside as well as the risk is big, big higher. And that is the reason the reward is also higher there. Next comes money. Money is the lifeline of all business. It may be own money or a borrowed money. What is the difference between own money and borrowed money? I am having money today and I can invest. There is no need for me to pay to any other person. It is called as the own capital. Whatever I want to do with that, I can do. The next one is, I do not have money today. I am going to some XYZ asking him to lend me the money. So what he will do? Do you think he will give it to me free of cost? No. He will tell me, you have to pay me so and so percentage as interest. That is nothing but the borrowed money. So what is the difference between the own money and borrowed money? It is very simple, the interest component, right? In our own money, we will not pay any interest to ourselves, correct? So anything, whatever you are earning out of your own money will be directly landing to you as a profit. Whereas when you have used borrowed money, what will it do? You will first borrow the money and you have to pay the interest for it. The interest component, right? That is the reward for the person who is giving you that initial capital to you. And since you are paying the particular interest, you have to deduct that because that money, even though you have earned, it's not a profit for you because you are going to give it to him. So that will reduce your profit. So in that particular action, what would happen? Uh, because of that, the profit will reduce because you are paying money to some other person. So that is the most important aspect, interest, between your own and borrowed capital. So why we need to have a borrowed capital? It is also called a leverage. As I have told you, that reduces the profit. Uh, the most of the people who are running business, they always look for other people's money to be involved in that business. Why? Because it is not possible for them to bring the entire money from their own sources. So naturally, they rely on some other person. The some other person, if they are coming as an equity participant, they can very well be a own capital. But it is not that everybody will be willing to join a particular other person's business or venture. They will uh, lend him their support. But what they will tell? You have to pay me this much money as interest. So naturally, that money he has to forego as interest for the person who is lending him the capital. So money is also available now. Ne next one is about missions. Uh, so missions are the ones which are actually uh, the items used to produce uh, the raw materials, from raw materials to the finished products. So if you are going to have any service also, you will have a lot of materials which you have to convert. So what you will do? You will buy that particular fixed asset and ensure that you are having that uh, in our uh, factory or the place where you are going to produce the particular product or do the particular service. So it is long term in nature. Example, purchasing some fixed assets, jigs, furniture, fixtures, etc. will come in that particular aspect. It is nothing but a machine that facilitates you to complete your production process or service requirements. For that, you have to pay upfront. Again, that may be paid by way of either your own capital or borrowed capital or a combination of both. Next comes the materials. Uh, you are having uh, fixed assets erected. Do you think it will run on its own? First and foremost, you think any machinery has to run with some utilities, like uh, it needs to have electricity, water, gas, etc., which has to be input into it so that it can run. And there may be some other consumables, etc. And for that, what you have to do? You have to pump in more money. And raw materials here is also more important because you have to use the raw material into that particular mission or process whereby it gives a final output. And that is short term in nature because uh, what would happen once the product is available, then you can very well sell it in the market and get the money back. So it is nothing but your working capital. As long as we are managing our working capital really nice, we can reduce one part. What is that part? As I have spoken to you sometime before, interest part. Because in your own capital, which is much lesser, you will not pay any interest. But if you are employing your borrowed capital in working capital, the interest cost is actually huge. So the lesser the working capital cycle for you, the better for the business because the business can earn more profit. And the final one, what we are going to speak is about methods. 
the methods uh, is nothing but the, uh, I, the process or the procedure by which a particular uh, uh, activity has to be performed either by the entrepreneur or by the laborer because as I have told you any methods whatever you are designing or the procedures whatever you are going to instruct it has to be done by men okay who is the men here in our factors of production it is the entrepreneur and the laborer only so they have to go ahead and just do whatever has been instructed there so that uh, this 5m concept can help us in the factors of production because they are the primary factors of production and help us to run the business and by running the business we can earn profit and by earning profit that helps to generate the wealth now we have to discuss about case studies so in this case study what we are going to do we are going to understand about a business scenario so that we can understand business economics from a case study a limited is one of the shoe manufacturing company in india they have both uh, in house production facility as well as contract facilities so they are preparing that particular shoe from other persons other smaller producers and they are uh, selling it in their brand name so uh, what they have done was that they have recruited a group of uh, uh, fresh uh, bubbly energetic energetic uh, freshers mba freshers uh, to study the markets so those people those trainees have gone to the market they have studied their existing markets as well as the potential markets and uh, one of the important observation what the team has provided was that uh, they have studied for all the geographies right they have specifically pointed out that in central india the penetration of wearing chapels by the people is very low okay and they were the management was actually stunned to see that and they wanted to drill down further and they came to know that the area what they have covered is primarily of tri tribal population and those people normally does not wear shoe or chapel which is one of the reason in that particular area uh, the shoe sale is not really great now having said that now the management is in a dilemma now okay whether they have to go and market their product in the particular region or not this is the most important thing now we have to understand something sometime before we have discussed about various aspect of economics 5ms business economics how a business end of the day please remember one thing is more important for us profit okay will we get profit it is really good if the persons are going to wear the chapel because their food is going to get protected but end of the day we are running a business here what is the profit or in case if i am going to incur loss today that's fine but over a period of time will i make a profit if so what is my payback period what is the investment required is what we have to see some of the things which i want to tell you okay when you are reading this or trying to solve this particular uh, uh, particular case study is that first and foremost thing uh, please understand that this is a business scenario okay there is nothing called as right or wrong answer why there is no right or wrong answer you do not know now if you introduce the product two years down the line or three years down the line we'll get to know whether it is actually getting sold there or not or two years or three years down the line you'll get to know that nothing is getting sold or everything is getting sold so we do not know the right answer at this point in time when the decision is actually taking place by the business so what they have to rely on they have to rely on the past statistics available or they have to go by the intuition or gut in making a particular decision and then uh, you can come up with various thought process but as a students i want you to document all the rational or hypothesis in why you are arriving at a particular decision as i have told you you can very well tell that the management should go and ensure that they are selling shoes and chapels there in the particular area you can do that or you can tell that presently that opportunity is not there we do not have any statistics let us not go there both the answers are right but when you are writing it you have to give the perspective what is the rational for that what are the hypotheses you have considered in arriving at the particular decisions in addition to that few hints from my side look into the overall population which is available in that particular area okay that speaks because if you convince one person that it is contagious in nature right you can convince multiple people and uh, it is very simple right uh, if one person started wearing chapel everybody started wearing chapel some 300 or 400 years before our people are wearing only dhotis right today we are all wearing pants shirts shoes etc 
This has happened because we know that other people are uh, wearing it and it is more comfortable. And over a period of time, we are getting accustomed to that new culture. So we have to look into that aspect from the population perspective. Second thing, whether they are interested, okay, whether they are interested in buying this, okay, what makes them to get interest, interested in buying this? It consists of two things. One, that uh, willingness to buy is because they like this product or that willingness to buy is because we are influencing them to buy. For instance, uh, look at your situation. Uh, if it is a sports show, what would happen? There are times whereby if it is uh, worn by a person like a famous cricketer like Virat Kohli, etc., naturally what we will do, there are persons who are following diligently Virat Kohli or Dhoni like that. We will follow that particular brand and we are happy to buy that particular product. It is primarily because they are getting influenced. It is not that they want the product, they just want a show, but they are going for a particular brand because their favorite sport person is actually providing an adv advertisement campaign there and they are getting influenced by that. So we have to look into the willingness to buy, whether it is direct or induced. Induced is primarily by way of advertisement or making them feel that, yeah, they can buy, etc., either by a direct marketing or by demonstrating it, going to them. Imagine a situation, a person is going into a hilly area without anything and uh, there is always a chance that he may have some leg pain, etc. You can go and demonstrate that the leg pain will go over a period of time. That is one thing whereby you can make it as a induced one for willingness to buy or direct. They themselves are looking for something because they are already suffering with pain in their legs. Right? And then ability to buy. Okay. Uh, one of the important uh, aspect, what has been given in the case study is that they are tribal population. Now you have to understand that what is the amount they are willing to pay for this. Okay, so willingness to uh, buy is there and then the ability to buy because if their income is going to be 200 rupees, right? And on a daily basis, they are hardly saving say 5 rupees or 10 rupees. You cannot go and offer them some product which is really not possible for them to go and use. So you have to ensure that you are pricing the product whereby they have the ability to buy. So these are the items which you have to understand when you are deciding on the particular cases, whether you want to... Uh, uh, introduce the uh, introduce your product in that new market or not and also uh, the management would be interested in ROI return on investment why return on investment because they are going to put some money there in case if they have to introduce that they have to create new distribution networks or new showrooms in addition to that there is always a uh, chance that you have to enhance your production capabilities also because you are anticipating some demand in a new area so what is going to be my return on investment? Because I'm going to put my money today, whether I will get my money back in two years, three years, five years, and what is the rate at which I can earn profit over a period of time is what we have to inform the management because management requires this. Of course, they do not need uh, something like for sure you are going to get profit, etc. But you, we have to provide them the rationale why we are taking the decision of either going there or not going there. If you are going there, what is the investment needed and what is the time period by which we are getting uh, the investment back and started earning profit and how we are planning to make the people to buy our chapels and are they in a position to buy our chapel, whether their willingness is direct or induced and more importantly, are they in a position to pay for the product or service we are going to provide. Moving to the end, we clearly know about now business, economics and business economics. Before completing it, I want to give you an update about the term economics also. It is derived out of a Greek word, okinomia, meaning household. So this helps us to understand about the origin of the word economics because primarily those are getting documented from there. We have already discussed about how it was appearing in India. In India, the Artha Shastra is one of the biggest treatises. It is not that before that economics was not there. It was there in a traditional form. We have also discussed about factors of production, which is nothing but land, labor, and capital, and how it helps to create a particular enterprise. And those factors of production helps us to create a product which is ultimately consumed by the consumer for which the enterprise has earned some money and profit thereby. And that profit actually helps in the wealth creation. We have also discussed about 5Ms and its relation to the factors, factors of production. And last but not the least, we had one case study 
and I want you students to just go through that, play among yourself in a role play model so that you can understand how the actual business decision can be taken. Hope to see you soon in the next study note.